If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we are back. Finally, this is the first video that I record since the demonetization. On that note, for people that haven't followed, yes, this channel was totally demonetized. However, now we are remonetized again. But it appears that we're still shadow banned over here on YouTube. So therefore, guys, do me the favor and follow me on Rumble. That being said, as you can see, a new beautiful layout here catering to YouTube because YouTube claimed that I'm simply copycatting content, that I'm not really doing genuine reactions, that I'm offering no value whatsoever. So we switched it up over here. Guys, now with no further ado, today we're going to respond to a Catholic's perspective on Islam's rapid growth from the channel The Daily Crossing. So for people that see my face for the very first time, I come from a Christian background myself. I haven't been a Muslim all my life. Quite the opposite, I reverted to Islam a few months ago. That being said, I come from an Orthodox Christian background. And if you compare Orthodoxy to Catholicism, they're both original Christian churches, if you will. However, the Catholics split off the Orthodox faith because back then in the Roman Empire, they wanted to instate a Pope, a so-called Vicar of Christ. The Orthodox Christians did not want a representative of God on earth, so to speak, and therefore they went against the Roman Catholics, and this led to the schism roughly a thousand years ago. Nevertheless, the Roman Catholics and the Orthodox Christians, I would claim, are the original Christian churches. All right, but enough babbling. With no further ado, let's have a look. Welcome, everybody. I want to speak to you about seven solutions that Islam is able to offer and provide today that the Catholic Church is no longer able to provide, or at least is not providing at this very moment. First and foremost, respect for this introspective look onto the Catholic Church, of course, here, because what the man just said is that the Catholic Church is not providing the solutions any longer. However, Islam is. And especially for a Christian, this takes a lot of courage, a lot of guts, because most Christians, not all, but most Christians do believe that Jesus Christ is God. We, of course, as Muslims, do not believe that. And because of this hurdle, this mental hurdle, they cannot go any further and look into Islam and see the value in Islam. However, this man over here as a Catholic left his biases and hopefully will give us a somewhat objective look. Closer as I've done before, you know what I mean? I'm absolutely a Catholic. I'm a practicing Catholic. Uh, cool. I've been uh, um, very much somebody that, that has appreciated history. I, I love uh, many of the uh, beautiful things that come from different traditions. Uh, I have also taken the time nice. to understand the evolution of, of uh, what is considered, you know, the uh, the, the the religions of uh, the um, the old books, right? Starting with uh, the Jewish tradition, uh, the Christian tradition, and now obviously uh, Islam as a predominant. Uh, type of faith, you know. I really have to say I appreciate how he presents his case over here and that he acknowledges the three old books, so to speak, starting with Judaism, then Christianity, and then, of course, Islam. And he speaks as well about the historical evolution of, in his case here, Christianity. This is absolutely crucial to understand. If you don't have any knowledge about church history, you will just take the Bible as gospel, as they say, no pun intended, and you will never be able to understand what Christianity is. Somebody that looked into the history will, of course, understand that Christianity was formed through the church fathers. It is not a linear succession coming from Jesus. Please understand this, dear Christians. We just did a recent video, you know, talking about how Islam is going to be a solution for just about everything. We just didn't get to highlight wow, uh, a number of things that they will have the capability to fix. But this is absolutely mind-blowing to me. If you already hold the position that Islam will fix about everything, 
why wouldn't you revert? Because that was my thought pattern before reversion as well. Once I realized that Islam is fixing truly everything that we identify as degenerate, as bad, as evil ultimately, as religious believers, we of course must understand then, if this is evil, it must come from the devil. If the solution, in this case Islam, is fixing all of those evils, it must be from God. Yes, and, and I Simple. want to do it painfully contrasting, and, and I'm saying painfully, not out of bitterness, but, but also absolutely recognizing the fact that there is a few things that the Catholic Church at some point was doing, has the capability to do, is no longer doing, and it appears that it's actually Islam that is, uh, is, is, is not only filling that vacuum, because in reality it's something that they have been doing with uh, consistency, and now it's becoming a lot clearer uh, that they're going to have the ability to introduce a number of solutions. The first one... Before he jumps into the first one, I have to point out that he mentioned here that back in the day, the church was able to fix those things that now are only fixed through Islam. And that is the main point here. Because the church had to enforce certain things. It was not willingly coming from the Christians. We had the Catholic Church, we had the Orthodox Church, and all of those were Roman institutions. And they forced certain values upon the society back then onto those pagans in Europe. However, Islam fixes those things without a clergy, without a pope. Actual Muslims or reverts to Islam that become then Muslims want to apply the Sharia. So Islam has a law and the believers want to follow that law. This is why Islam fixes everything, because it does not have to be forced upon the believer. Once your heart opens up to Islam, you see it everywhere. You realize that the Sharia is the godly law and you follow it naturally. The first one uh, that I want to highlight for you is the benefit uh, in, in the role that men do play when it comes to the responsibility of men, uh, when it comes to society, when it comes to family, you know, especially these days with the whole concept of uh, hierarchies and, and patriarchies uh, has been labeled as something extremely negative. Uh, you know, I absolutely <laughs> yeah. come from a family that believe in the whole concept of uh, either patriarchy or matriarchy for that matter, right? There was one person running the family, and which I one is know it? Patriarchy or matriarchy? How healthy it is when one person is able to make choices, however easy or complicated those decisions happen to be. Uh, but in the process of. Yeah, but that one person should be, of course, the father. Because even if you look into your own Bible, as I said, I come from a Christian background, you see the hierarchy in the Bible is God over Christ, Christ over men, men over women, women over children. That is the hierarchy of God described within the Bible. And therefore, the Bible, of course, describes a patriarchy, as all the other religions, the Abrahamic faiths at least, describe as well. A patriarchy works why? Because it's a natural order of things. If you look into nature and you will see within the animal kingdom, there is a natural order of things. A natural order that God has created, of course. And now if we go against that order, then we will suffer. It is that simple. And this is why in this day and age, in this modernity, everything goes against the natural order of God, of course. I cannot name those things over here on YouTube. You already know what I'm talking about. But the attack on the patriarchy is, of course, an attack on God, starting with atheism and then further escalating into feminism, veganism, etc., etc., you name it. But I really have to critique you here. You, as a Catholic Christian man, shouldn't even talk about a matriarchy. It is crystal clear that the father is the head of the household and the wife has to obey the husband. Trying to um, mislabel or destroy the concept of what it is to have a, a patriarchal structure, you know, a lot of things yes. got to be attacked. You know what I mean? The concept of man and manhood uh, in general to the extent that it almost comes across as by trying to put men and women at, at an equal level, uh, instead of, you know, helping um, enhance the, the role, the phenomenal role that women already played, which, which is in many ways 
if we break it down, is even greater to uh, many of the roles that men are playing today. Uh, don't cater to that, man. It's not greater. Under God, yes, we are equal. However, our roles are absolutely different. The woman, yes, has huge responsibilities, has to give birth, has to take care of the children, has to take care of the household. But our responsibilities as men are humongous as well. We have to provide. We are working our butts off, ideally, providing for our family or in Islam, even potential families. Those are the roles that the genders have to fulfill under God. But first and foremost, we have to understand that we are different. We are totally different. And you know what? The best thing about women, for me personally, is that they are not like me, that they're different from me. That's actually what I appreciate because I do not want to have a man as a wife. <laughs> That's the whole point. There is beauty in difference, of course. The woman has her female energy, we have our masculine energy, and combined it forms a beautiful thing. And this is exactly what feminism destroys, of course. It is not about female empowerment, it is about destroying the family. But the fact of the matter is that men have a very specific responsibility. And yep. Islam, you know, has a very unique way to remind men that you are responsible for your relationship with anything that has been created by God, uh, that you do have a role to play as a man uh, uh, to Respect. protect and provide for your family in a way that right now that message is not necessarily coming across. There's too much of an effort today by the Catholic Church uh, to think in terms of equality uh, in a way that it appears to be a little misguided. Yes, absolutely. And the problem here is the church, that you have to go to the church in order to get your information. And I'm not a Protestant over here. I'm not saying just read the Bible. But in this case, I actually have to say just read your Bible. Because if you look into your Bible, you will clearly see that there is a blueprint for masculinity as well. If you look into the Bible, it is crystal clear that the men should be the heads of their household. And if you go into Leviticus, I don't have to tell you how Leviticus speaks about gender equality, if you know what I mean. And contrast that now with Islam. In Islam, we have the Quran and Sunnah. And that never changes. We don't have an institution that goes against the Quran and the Sunnah. If they would, they wouldn't be Muslim any longer. It is that simple. However, in Christianity, yet again, you have a monopoly, so to speak, on revelation through the church fathers and now in Catholicism through the Pope. And if the Pope becomes liberal, the whole church becomes liberal. Don't you see how detrimental this is for Christianity? He, of course, sees that. And this is why Islam, yet again, is the solution, because we don't have that clergy that becomes liberal out of a sudden and changes our faith. I truly believe that Islam can and will remove a lot of the abuses of the many uh, secular uh, concepts that career politicians are introducing today, especially when it comes to... If our, applied correctly, you know, it the, removes the, them all. The amount of um, conflicted, unhealthy conversations that are taking place, uh, especially right now in light of what's taking place with the uh, transgender movement, um, th this, there's an incredible lack of clarity uh, this coming in even from the position of the Catholic Church where just look at Leviticus there is no confusion at all for Christians everybody, which many people will argue it's a very Christian tradition very Christian thing to do love everybody accept everybody uh, but at the same time you also have the responsibility to protect the helpless you know especially protect the children uh, when it comes to certain concepts that everybody that has a little ounce of common sense should know that is not healthy, uh, it's not a good display of, of uh, morals and, and values, or I mean uh, that a lot of things that uh, can very easily be lost. It only takes us a couple of generations. I want to say have a something, opposite but I can't. Perspective about what right and wrong, good and bad. We're going to keep be. this for rumble. And and it, and this is precisely where the unapologetic and 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 literally not willing to negotiate their position. Islam is saying we are going to call evil evil. We are going to call uh -huh. wrong wrong. Uh -huh. And that's something that, uh, sadly enough. You know, the, the Catholic Church has not taken a position wow. uh, with enough clarity. Uh, Call what is evil, evil. That's exactly the point. This Catholic man over here has identified that. Yet again, my question is then, if you identify that, if you see that the Islamic law is firm in its stance against evil, 
Why don't you accept it? It is so simple. Wouldn't God's law eradicate evil? For, for many years, as, as you know, if anybody really follows a little bit of history, um, for many years, whether people liked it or not, the Vatican, the papacy, you know, Catholic Church, uh, in many ways has advanced and, and introduced uh, the conversation about, again, right and wrong, you know, morals, values, principles, uh, and a lot of things that really help society to function even a little better. But for whatever sure, reason, absolutely. Uh, today the Catholic Church is silent in many very, very, very important topics uh, that deal with the concept of morality, but especially when it comes to helping uh, our children. Islam is definitely not afraid. And I say that uh, with, with full conviction after seeing many situations where they are going to proclaim or position what well, they're saying, this, especially when it comes to protecting the children and protecting the family unit. But it's so extremely simple if you look at it honestly and logically. In this world, we have different value systems. If you look at communism, for example, communism is like atheism on steroids, a godless society that is obsessed with work and human flourishing, if you will. Then you have a democracy, which is, uh, I'm not going to even get into that. Then you have a dictatorship, right? And then you have a theocracy. Within theocracy, you have different systems, such as Hinduism or Christianity or Islam. Ultimately, you have different value systems, and those value systems come with fixed beliefs. A value system is not changing, of course, because it presupposes a set of values. That simple, yet again. And therefore, if your religion comes with a value system, and yet again, I want to refer you to Leviticus, please read it, Christian or Muslim, please look into those old laws that are now not followed by any Christian any longer. However, they are within your Bible. So those are the moral guidelines for Christianity as well. Why are they not followed any longer? A value system, as I said, has to follow a certain rule set. So if you don't, it's not a value system any longer. And now he gives credit to Islam and he says, hey, Islam doesn't change. They hold on to their beliefs. Yeah, duh, of course. Why wouldn't they? Because if you believe that your religion is from God, it has been revealed with a certain law set, why wouldn't you follow it? Why would you change? That's the whole argument here. If you believe that you have a divine law, who are you to change it? That would be absolutely ridiculous. And therefore, contrasting to that would be, for example, liberalism. So liberalism is consistently changing. And that is fine because those are man-made laws. Let them do what they will and they will suffer ultimately. However, in contrast, a theocracy based upon a religion cannot change in their rulings, cannot change in their law. And this is why it is so ridiculous that Christianity now is changing. And it has been changing, of course, since a thousand years, roughly since the schism. I say it over and over again. If you really want to be a Christian that upholds a tradition, you would be either an Orthodox Christian, ideally, or a Catholic. But with Catholicism, we have this big issue, of course, that you have the Pope. And now you have to follow the Pope into degeneracy. It's so I, I know that at some point the argument of secular law uh, versus natural law or God's law, if you want to, if I want to call it, at some point I know you should that, call that yeah. it's, there's not even a competition. There's, there's no desire so much for integration as much as to say there is a law that has come from something greater than Absolutely. us, which is God. What I just said. That law should be the predominant ruling law when it comes of to course. right and wrong, good and bad. Exactly right, man. This is exactly what I said, because think about it. Christianity led to secularism, but secularism is already the defeat of Christianity because you admit, hey, you know what? Our law is not correct, is not perfect. We need better laws. And then you go to humans and humans develop new laws, liberal new laws. That is defeatism. You threw God's law under the bus. Uh, I, I know for a fact that today, Islam is not afraid to make that argument. Um, number two, I mean, number three, uh, a missionary spirit. You know, this is a, uh, a, a very interesting uh, scenario because in many ways, that was uh, one of the, the, the early mandates of Christianity, you know, go and, and preach the gospels, right? And, and so, and today is, uh, uh, clearly, uh, there's a certain level of confusion to the extent that the current Pope 
uh, of the Catholic Church, uh, uh, Pope uh, Francis, um, is clearly saying that at this point, nobody should be asked to convert to Catholicism. Wow. which essentially goes <laughs> against many of the principles of yeah, the and it will destroy church, you, of right? course. And I'm going to address a little bit Amazing. about the difference between that Catholic Church that is um, taking that position post-Vatican II. Meanwhile, the others are recruiting, the Catholic church that if you know what I mean. The position of the Catholic Church pre-Vatican II. But at this point, Islam makes no apology, right? Saying our intention is to help you understand that we believe that the message we have is the message, is the path to, uh, to God, is the path to salvation, is the path to eternal life. And we are going to go out there with a missionary spirit to try to convert everybody. So That's that is uh, something that, that unfortunately we don't see. Um, if, it's, if it's taking place, I don't even want to call it organically. Actually, I want to say that it's taking place in a very timid way, right? The, the Catholic Church right now is approaching that. In, 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 a, in a way that uh, it's almost quietly, almost like not wanting to create any conflict with anybody. And, and if you don't stand for something, uh, you're gonna fall for anything, is, is uh, the popular saying. Out yeah, you will fall for anything and ultimately you will fall. That's the whole point here. So you have a church that is consistently changing, that is not upholding God's law and is not recruiting anybody. So this is really how you die out. Respect tremendously. I respect tremendously the clarity that uh, if you have, if you truly believe, if you're truly believer, you have to carry your message out there and you have to be willing to compare it. And you have to be willing yes. to say, I have no issues going to any place, to anybody. And, and right now it appears that that clear position uh, is only coming out of Islam and not necessarily from the Catholic Church. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. And that is because Islam's message is clear. If you look into the Catholic Church, you see again the Trinity, you see that Jesus died for your sins. So therefore you can basically sin, but no, you cannot. You're not saved just by grace, but you do need deeds, etc., etc. You name it, it's extremely confusing. On the other hand, Islam, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul Allah. So what we say here is, there is no God worthy of worship, but God and Muhammad is his messenger. It is a simple message. That of course implies here as well, that previous messengers before Muhammad, may peace be upon him, were messengers of God and came with the same message, la ilaha illallah. There is no God worthy of worship, but God, which means pure monotheism. What did the prophets preach? Pure monotheism. Where did they preach it to? Mostly to the pagans. The pagans worshipped all kinds of things. Golden calves, deities, statues, whatever. And Islam, monotheism, came to dismantle those false ideologies, those false gods, to redirect the worship onto one god. This message is eternal. It is always the same. That is a simple message. Anybody can understand it. It is a natural religion. And this is why Islam, i.e. the Muslims, they are not afraid, of course, to stand up against anybody and discuss their theology. Because it is so much more rational to believe that there is no God worthy of worship, rather than that there is a God worthy of worship and he is merciful. However, to forgive us, he has to sacrifice his own son. But guess what? Hey, trick. He is his own son because God is the son as well as he is the father and the Holy Spirit. This is not an easy doctrine in the Bible. However, it says your God is not a God of confusion. So how can this be? If the message truly comes from God, it should be simple. And if the message comes from God, it should be a solution for the problems that we have in the world, i.e. Islam. Another important aspect, which would be number four, uh, is Islam uh, will definitely help remove many of the vices that people all are of them the biggest followed. crisis that all the United States is facing with right now has to do has to do with fentanyl you know it has uh, and, and just by the way just about every possible drug that's not the only drug that they're struggling with but drugs and alcohol but one of the most significant impacts that you can actually see from somebody that goes through the process of conversion is that it becomes very clear that these things are not welcome the, the, the drinking and drugs and, 
And a lot of this other behavior... Exactly right. Ways the thing is, coming from an Orthodox Christian background, I can tell you that drugs are prohibited within Christianity as well, of course. And even getting drunk is prohibited within Christianity. However, alcohol is not prohibited. And like that, you open up the door. Within the society, we already have a drug culture, be it caffeine, be it alcohol, be it nicotine, or be it certain prescription drugs. So all of those things are legal already. Now they escalate it further. Weed becomes legal everywhere as well. And this is how you create a slippery slope because they tell you, oh, well, weed is the gateway drug. Or oh, really, is it? My first drug was alcohol and then cigarettes. Cigarettes. And then the third drug would have been wheat. So therefore, it's not a gateway drug whatsoever. You already start with a society that is hooked up on drugs. And therefore, Islam, yet again, crystal clear. Alcohol is haram. Once you make alcohol haram, you look around you and you see that your society is in the wrong. Listen, I come from a fitness background as well. When I see what people eat nowadays, I see that society is wrong directly when they're munching on hamburgers every single day. Of course, that is wrong. That is not a healthy diet to be had. However, when you don't see anything wrong with alcohol, then you don't see where your society went wrong either. And as I said, then you open up the door. This is why, yet again, Islam wins. And a lot of these other behaviors that in many ways is quasi accepted uh, or less or not clearly condemned by of course uh, by the you Catholic have wine church. in the church for that many <laughs> of the other uh, Christians uh, uh, institution as a matter of fact you know the alcohol in many ways it, a bottle of wine here and a bottle of wine there is very much uh, part of the day-to-day uh, -day interaction come on brother come on Christians you're a sis myself for for full disclosure you're right? yeah. I, my family's from Spain uh, I'm, I'm a guy that always has a bottle of wine in, in my house. So I don't want you to Digit. think that I'm saying something that and is Digit. not part of my day to day. Um, day to day. The fact of the matter is that many people don't do <laughs> the occasional let's have dinner with a glass of wine. Many people are absolutely suffering from uh, this uh, serious sickness, which is to be an alcoholic or to be a drug addict. And, and I've seen things that can only be considered almost literally miracles uh, for, for how affected was the turnaround on the behavior of many people that were suffering from this drug. So uh, point number uh, five. All right, this is it for today's video. As you just saw, the man has many more points to make. However, dear YouTube, <coughs> I'm gonna cut it off here so you cannot claim that I'm simply copying a video and I'm not adding any valuable commentary to it. That being said, I have to repeat this. This man already saw the light of Islam. You already see it, man. You see that it fixes all the problems that you face. Even when it comes down to alcohol, you mentioned it yourself, you have wine at home and it is a daily occurrence. Ditch that dirty habit and come to Islam. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you further want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, or many other ways, all of them are found in the description box below. Please have a look and support Bobby's perspective. All right, guys, but this is it for today. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.